Hello, 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 everyone. It's Helen Hart Smith and Kathy from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel coming to you with another podcast. podcast. Uh, we're here with episode 213 and it we're trying recording in a new room. And it's so, kind of echoey. So we'll see how this pans out. So we're, if it's too much, let us know and we'll never do this again. <laughs> yeah, we're always trying new things because, well, that's what we do. Because because really my house hasn't been cleaned up since Thanksgiving. And so there's no furniture in the basement. It's all in the den. And Randy's in the living room. So we're in the kitchen. Right. So um, so today we're... Um, we're going to do something new. I've done some book reviews before, both on the blog and um, separate or in separate videos. But we're going to talk about a book that um, our coven just finished reading together for coven study. Yay! We finished Yay, a book. We finished a book. Um, but but we've got business before we uh, we, we got business business. What that business, business is? It's time for the. Correspondence of, of the week. week. <laughs> um, I just love how 50s we are. <laughs> sure. We need one more voice and then we could have that, you know, that, that, that. I don't know what you want. Andrew's sister's oh, sound Magnus. going on. I don't think Magnus can say Correspondence no. of the Week, no, um, he but couldn't. he could probably yeah. harmonize or something. <laughs> So anyhow, so this week, um, because we were doing a book review, um, I always equate reading with gaining knowledge. And so we decided that we would pull out an oldie but a goodie with origins deep rooted in our psyche from gaming. <laughs> Age the ascension. That's right. Um, so we thought we'd talk about the color yellow. 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 So um, a bright and cheerful color yellow is. It is. It is the color of my den. It is a prime color. It is. It is one of the colors of the three rays. It is also an elemental color. It is. Mm -hmm. What does it signify? Air. Air. Right. right. Which is... Knowledge. Knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, knowledge is uh, attributed to uh, persuasion and protection. Happiness. Um, it is linked with the solar plexus. It is the color of the solar plexus chakra, which is all about self-empowerment. It is connected with knowledge seeking. And that's kind of where we brought it into gaming. this well we brought it into <laughs> gaming and that's why we brought yeah. that's an, kind of why we brought it into this for this so i would recommend anyway and i tried to um if you're reading and, and attempting to do some serious knowledge seeking burn a yellow candle yes um that's actually one of the first spells that one of the first spells that I did and it is actually the first spell that I did for someone not oh, witch related. I remember that. Yeah, there was um, there was this girl that I worked with that um, was going back to college, and you know she it had been some time since she had um, done any kind of classes and stuff like that, and she was a little nervous about it and stuff, and so um, I did a candle and um, put some oils on it and. And scribbled some stuff in the side of it and told her to burn it whenever she was studying. And I don't know how it ever ended up for her, but... If I remember correctly, it worked well. Yeah. It's been it's a while. Seen, yeah. I mean, that was that was three jobs ago. That was 20 years three ago. Three or four jobs ago. That was 20. So, yeah, that was... Uh, that was Close to 20 years ago. That was... Bottom floor, Bradley Street. Ooh. Yeah, it was yeah. it was close to 20 years ago. Probably yeah. 18. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So anyhow, so that, that is the correspondence, correspondence of, of the week. week. 
So let's get into the meat of it, shall we? The meat and potatoes. So, Kathy, what is the book that we just finished? We reading? just reading The Body Sacred by Diane Sullivan. Mm -hmm. This is not the first book we've read by her. No, the first book that we um, read from her is The Circle Within. And I oh, remember we, awesome. we enjoyed that yeah. immensely. That was all about, that one was all about. Um, Bringing practice into your everyday life. Right. And I want to say that I may have done a blog review um, mm -hmm. of that. I don't know. if I'll, I'll check. And if I did, then I'll try to remember to link that um, below. Um, so, so this one, however, was about... Um, it, it was about, obviously, your body and how to change the way that you look at your body and how to make it sacred in your life. Mm -hmm. And of course, this has got to spin towards women because Diane Sylvan is, of course, is a, a woman, woman writing the book. And and she's a very easy read. She's very down to earth. She's very, um, she's, she's not all about the go to the gym 30 minutes every day and make sure that you drink all your, you know, water yeah. and watch your carbs. She doesn't do that. She's got a real humorous style to her writing, right. which I can appreciate. Mm -hmm. Um, the the book came out in 2005 which okay. um you can tell by some of you can tell by by some of the stories and things that she um references right and things like that that you know it's it's definitely not released this year or anything like that but that doesn't make it a bad read it's definitely no, no, no. a good read no it's it's still there's still a lot of really good information um it you can just you can date it a little bit um so it comes in it's a it's about the size of a small notebook um in case you're wondering comes in at about 312 pages um it's soft cover as far as i know i don't I did not see it available in hardcover anywhere. Although it is so. also available on Kindle. Right. Um, and a, it looks like uh, there were quite a few reviews on Amazon and um, it had a five-star rating. So yeah. lots of people like it. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciated um, the way that she spoke. Um, she talks, first of all, about how, how we're taught to not appreciate our bodies if they're not model perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it talks she talked a lot about like body shaming and um the the stereotyping that happens and how we're taught from an early age that you know our bodies are dirty or our bodies right. are you know you know should be hidden away and and different mm -hmm. things like that and, and you got a belly roll you got to get rid of that you got to right. hide all your imperfections right and yeah so she really talks about that and tries to break down some of the walls um with that to kind of make your body, you know, our bodies are beautiful. Our bodies are our temple. Our body is our link to the physical world. And as witches, we need to treat them as such, you right. know. Right. Um, it's one thing to be healthy. It's another thing to be over... Un unhealthy in your pursuit of a perfect image that you're never going to be. Well, a perfect image that is given to us by... Right. advertising companies which and, those aren't even realistic right. a lot of that is it's just the camera angles and it's, photoshopping <laughs> right right airbrushing right, right. um yeah i really enjoyed she broke down the um there's only like eight chapters i think in the book there is eight chapters and she broke down e each of the chapters dealt with kind of like an archetype well, of not, the female not all of them. self. Um, five of them did. The first chapter is called The Fall from Grace, which is where she talks about um, why we were getting it wrong. Um, the second one is The Return to the Altar, which is talking about how to, how to change those, how to spin um, your outlook. The third one is about the reflection, so how you see yourself. And then she goes into the other five. No. Yes, five are about the archetypes: the mother, healer, lover, dancer, crone. Yeah, I, she had some really good things to say too. There was exercises in the chapters, um, things like you know, taking a, a bath 
and um, some healing healing exercises and stuff like that. I just really appreciate everything that she put into this book. I think it's it's great for a woman to read. Yeah, I I, I think it. I'm not sure how much it would benefit a man just because it's spun toward the women. Mm -hmm. But um, we had talked with our students, and one of our students frequently brings her husband to the book study or to the to our study sessions. And we were discussing this book and the chapter where it talks about um, the self image and and what we're taught to believe and what we're taught to to look at and. And he was saying how he feels that pressure too, because he doesn't have a you know a quarterback body, mm -hmm. right? You know, right, right? Yeah, I do remember him talking about that. And you know what? There's probably there's probably a male equivalent book out there. If not, there should be. There should be. You know, because there are just as many archetypes for guys as there are for women, right? You know, because you've got the the sage, you've got the well, the warrior, the, and the hero, healer, and, and right, the you know, shaman, that would, and that kind of thing. Right. So yeah, that would I would be interested to know if there is a book like that, guys. If you uh, yeah. if you know of one, let us know. And I really think that um, that there's a lot in the book that men would would find value in mm -hmm. it's just that it's spun toward a woman so mm -hmm. that might be well a i mean off -putting. even if it even even if a guy read it in hopes of understanding yeah women more right that there's value to be had there yeah i, I think you're right on that just like if there's <clears throat> you know an equivalent guy book right you know that a woman could benefit from reading it because right. i mean we're forever we're forever stereotyping each other. Yes. Um, yes. About that, sometimes it just makes me sick how much you, they we stereotype. But you mm -hmm. get on Facebook and you see all these memes, and it's like, um, yeah, not all women are like that, and not all men are like that. Mm -hmm. And can't we just give each other a break sometimes? You know, it it makes me think that um, there's a, a young man that works at uh, at my company that I work for and he's the only guy who employed there. Yeah. And it's a lot of older women mm -hmm. that work there. And so there's a lot of times that expectations come to him for certain quote unquote guy things. Right. And um, his mom is actually um, the supervisor, the kind of the, the chicken charge, you know, kind of a thing. And we kind of, we were having a discussion one day and she's like, you know what? He does not necessarily have a, like an inherent knowledge for things that well, are attributed to guys. Look at, okay. Are we using your craft name or her real name? Who? Cornflower. I, I, you know what? We've gone back and forth. Okay. So... Cornflower. So I'm sorry you <laughs> said that. I'm just going to say that. Um, her and her husband, her husband doesn't know the first thing about fixing anything in the house. Mm -hmm. And so she's the one that does any remodeling or the installing shelves mm -hmm. or anything that, that requires power tools. She's the one who does it because he doesn't have the first clue. And I think a lot of that for her has to do with the fact that she's pretty close with her dad, right? Well, that and she... She lived was, on her own. For yeah, a she was. How she old lived, when she got married? 30, 35? something like that. And she lived so, in her house. Cornflower, for... make sure that you comment on here. Clear it Hold up for us. us. Clear us up for us. <laughs> we, can't, we can't remember. Hi, Nala. But yeah, so I mean, you know, he in in this coworker, he kind of he kind of finds it a little. A little much sometimes to have that expectation. Yeah, it's probably daunting for him because if he's younger, then he doesn't know how to do all this. Right, so right. Not everybody can be a Randy. Well, and Randy came by his, you know, knowledge from years of experience right. and doing and Well, yeah, he was doing that kind of stuff that. when he was young too, mm -hmm. but that was just what yeah. he liked to do. So, yeah. And realistically, we are kind of a society um, nowadays that... You know, we're not exactly able to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Does it? Do you know what I mean? We're we're a technological we're a, we're a technological based society 
that, you know, not Come everybody... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we have bad kitty techno technological problems here. <laughs> not everybody knows how to hang drywall. Not right. any, you know, or install right. flooring. Well, fix your car. You know, you exactly. don't have to know that stuff anymore. Right. Right. Where a hundred years ago, you had to know how to plant the the garden. You had right. to know how to fix get the your own seeds. Broke. Get you know, right. collect your seeds at the end of the growing season. Right, and, stuff and, like that. and we're so far removed from that stuff. I mean, if God forbid, God us forbid that you know our economy and our society collapsed, we would be back at the Stone Age because nobody knows how to do this crap. All right. Nala, will you stop it? But I mean, I think that I think that there are some folks out there that are kind of recognizing. Right. Well, you have the survivalists. There. Right. Right. We are so far off topic. Well, no, that's well. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you know we're just having a discussion about you know body images and all that kind of right. stuff. Well, and, and, we're and kinda... it's, it's body images and it's it's sex it's uh, gender roles, which mm -hmm. I think is ridiculous. Right. Right, yeah, and I mean, and it's kind of hard to, it, it's one thing to be aware and to kind of, <laughs> okay guys, Nala is like demanding attention, so <laughs> if we hear any crashes, that's her, you know, making herself at home. Or that's me throwing across the room because usually after she does this, she bites. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, so Gender roles. And um, oh, it's one thing to like be aware of it and try to change it, but it's. It's going to take where we at where where we are as a society is something that's happened over thousands of years, right. hundreds of years in some cases, and so it's not going to it's not going to change overnight. Right, and so. and we see a lot of changes in our society just because everything is changing for us so quickly as far as technology is concerned in the information mm -hmm. age. Right. But that doesn't mean that our lizard brains are ready to get on board with gender equality. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's still a lot of other inequalities in society mm -hmm. that's happening. So, I mean, we're I like to think that we're making progress, but, you know, who knows? But then Trump gets elected and yeah. we realize we're not really. Well, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so I think that in terms of the book... I, I don't know if you've seen my ratings system. It's the brooms, isn't it? It's brooms. It's There's brooms. five brooms is the highest and, you know, of course, goes down from there. So, Kathy, tell me, how many brooms would you give? Well, I, um, Nala, god dang it. Don't bite me. I give Nala one broom because she's a bad kitty. Mm -hmm. uh, um, poor parenting. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, um, I, I really appreciated this book and I think, I wish that I had found this book 30 years ago. Oh God, mm -hmm. I'm dating myself. I <laughs> wish that I had found a book, this book or one like it 30 years ago, because I think that it is, I don't want to say it's a must read for any woman mm -hmm. because, or any pagan woman, because it does have the pagan bent, because it really helps show you what is getting shoved down your throat as far as body image is mm -hmm. concerned and and helps you work through how to I'm bleeding how to get past that and so I would give this book five brooms you know I would agree with you um I think it is right up on right up there quality writing wise subject wise Humor, things like that as applicability as the circle within and um i think i would give it five as well i mean i think it's a really good read it's a quick read i mean yes it's 312 pages but they go quickly they do and and there's there's you know quotes and, and that's what i was gonna there's, say there's also some exercises in there that she recommends like you know take a bath and do this or right yeah go outside and do this mm -hmm. and i really enjoyed the quotes from like you know oh, yeah. famous people that yeah. you know we're in the margins and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a really good read. So, um, yeah, we highly recommend it. Five brooms. Um, there you have it. Um, so that kind of wraps up the main part of the podcast. Podcast. So let's take a minute to kind of talk about housekeeping. what we wanted to what we want to try to start doing. Right. Um, I put out a video um, earlier this week. Um, asking for um, asking for questions from you guys. We'd like to do a podcast where we talk about how do you talk um, 
how do you talk to people about your faith? And as a correlation to that, how do you talk to people who completely disregard your belief system and want you to only believe theirs? <coughs> Mother. <coughs> So we were looking for questions and I realized as somebody pointed out on the, um, the actual video, you know, I'm not sure how to make a question for a question. So I was trying to figure out a way to like reformulate like what I was asking, but I'm just <laughs> not really sure. So, so if you have a situation that you want to talk about and have us give some suggestions, note that we are not psychologists, so we are not professionals, so we can give you our opinion, but that doesn't mean it's the right one. Mm -hmm. Um, or if you have something that you have done to talk to people about your religion or people who have a problem with your religion that you would like to share with us, we would be more than willing to talk about that too. Mm -hmm. um, if you have questions, you know, hey, I, I want to come out of the broom closet to my sister. How do I do that? Hey, I want to come out at work. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. um, those are perfectly valid and, and good questions to ask. <laughs> so... Um, if you want, you can either leave a question or comment or whatever um, on this um, video, because this will be a video on YouTube. So, or you could go back to that video right, and right. do that. So when do you want to film that or record that? Because we should give a cutoff date. Um, well, probably in the next two weeks. Okay, so and today... If you, Today is... Um, well, we're not... It won't post today. Right. So it'll post on Friday, which the will second. be the 2nd of December. So do you want to say, give us the information by the 16th of December? Yeah, we'll try to, we'll try to record, um, we'll record, we'll try to record a podcast with well, that content. If, if you come over early on the 17th, then we can do it before we do ritual. Right. Okay. We'll try. The seventeenth is a little crazy, so well we'll do it. I mean, if we so get us the questions, comments, concerns in by, the next couple of weeks by December sixteenth, two thousand sixteen, and then we will and we will attempt to get it recorded and posted before the end of the year. Now, saying that, what we would also like to start doing is have a little bit at the end of the podcast where we talk about anybody's questions, comments, concerns. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a story that you want us to share, if you have a question about a specific thing that you want us to talk a little bit about, mm -hmm. please make a comment on any of our um, podcasts or videos. On the channel. And, and we, or, will, we or, will make sure to, to talk about that. So, or if you have an idea for a, a complete podcast or a top 10. Right. Um, and then aside from that, if you're not comfortable with posting a question or right. a comment or whatever, we do have an email address and we always put that in the description box. But and it's, it now, just heart, for... it's heart of the witch's path at yahoo.com. So you can um, go ahead and email us okay. there. So witches, that's W I T C H S. Correct. Okay. And that's in the link. Okay. So, yeah. I just, because I always put an E in there and there's no E. There's no E. Okay. No, because it's possessive. Possessive, is, not, not multiple. Right. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So, you can you can get a hold of us in many ways. Right. So, um, please do so. We like to hear from you. Um, I try to um, reply back to comments in a timely manner um, and such. So... Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're looking to do, kind of make things a little bit more interactive for us, um, here, you know, to... Right, because we could talk forever about oh, pretty much anything, <laughs> but we want, we want to hear what you want to hear about. Exactly. So, um, exactly. so if you haven't already, please subscribe, whether you're listening to this, um, via YouTube or Podomatic or iTunes. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you haven't already, or if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up or like it or whatever you can do wherever. We appreciate that. <laughs> right. Give, a, give us a comment about anything that you want to give a comment about. Right. It doesn't have to be about the podcast. Right. We like to hear from people. Right. So I think that's going to wrap it up for us this time. I think you're right. I think we covered all the business. So that's it. <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening. And um, until next time, thanks for walking the path for a little while with us. Blessed, Blessed be. be.